Working in retail is never easy, especially when you have to deal with a bunch of crazies. Welcome to this episode of Tales from Retail. Our first tale is from Me Fling, titled Lady Picks on New Guy for Double Scanning Items. Upon inspection, he actually missed an item and her total went up. We have this one regular who likes to pick on new team members. She goes through the newest cashier if she can, and always raises a stink until the manager, me, comes by to demolish her. She always leaves grumpy, so why does she keep shopping here? Who friggin' knows? So she goes through Jay's till today. He has been here two weeks, and is one week fresh on the register. He's doing great, and so far has made every effort to understand the register, and he's been pretty independent. He scans through all her items, asks about the club card, offers a bag, and announces her total. She then scoffs and says, how can it be that much? Jay then jovially tells her that items can add up when you're in the zone, and repeats her total. She insists he scans something twice, and not quite having faced a customer like this before, he calls me over for backup. After listening to her claim, I dutifully check each item's tag with the register's item list to satisfy her paranoid claim, all the while explaining to Jay how to handle a double scanned item. Wow, what a surprise! Ma'am, nothing was scanned twice, however it looks like Jay missed an item while scanning. Your new total is up by $15. Cash or card? This woman stared at Jay and I for at least 5 full silent seconds before she started apologizing and saying her English was bad and she didn't understand what we were saying. I explained what happened a couple different ways, ensuring there was no conflict of communication and each time repeated her heightened total. Eventually she gave up and paid the higher amount. She sulked on out of the store, claiming that we always do this crap with her. Sorry lady, idiot tax is real. P.S. I did discuss with Jay to be a little more careful and steady at cash going forward, just to make sure he doesn't miss any more items. Just in case this has been a recurring problem and not a one-off. I have high hopes for him going forward. I love how when she got called out, all of a sudden her English wasn't the greatest. It just goes to show she was trying to pull a fast one and got caught. This next tale is by Sad Skelly, titled, This is Real Gucci. This isn't a retail horror story, but it's something that confused me and made me pause for a moment to give my brain some time to comprehend that people like this really exist. I was checking out a customer at the grocery store I work in, and as I was scanning his items, he pointed at his mask and said, Look at this, this is real Gucci. I paused for a moment and just looked at him wondering how he wanted me to react and why he just said that out of the blue with no previous conversation. I just laughed because that's all I do when I'm unsure of what my reaction should be, and he smiled and paid and left. I just wonder what made him think that I cared what brand his mask was. Was he expecting me, the peasant cashier, to bow down and kiss his feet at the knowledge that he could afford a Gucci mask? You know, the way you say that at the end, it makes you wonder if that's exactly what he was expecting, or, or some major reaction that, no way, you got a Gucci mask. In the end, nobody besides materialistic people really give a damn. Our next tale is from Loka Tech, titled Glitch in the Matrix. Another poster writing about what they couldn't control for the customer reminded me of this exchange earlier this summer. Working at a fine auto way station with a car spa, car wash, it's a little car wash, we get some people who get confused as to how buying a wash is supposed to work. You can pay three ways. You can drive right up to the machine kiosk and use your credit card, but only your credit card and it can be a little tricky. Most people like to either pay inside by cash or they pay at the pump while they're getting gas. This is easier, and then they're given a code number on their receipt to enter at the kiosk, which will start their car wash. The other day, an already inconvenienced old man came to the counter to say that his receipt didn't print out, therefore he didn't get his car wash, which he had paid for. 
This happens commonly enough that I know well that I can just call up the pump transaction on the register and reprint his receipt with the car wash code on it. Naturally, the first thing I ask him is, what pump number is he at? He replies, 9, and repeats that number consistently as we transaction tango. The reason for the song and dance was, I wasn't getting any readout from pump number 9. Now, this can happen too. Sometimes the network is slow, or sometimes it's just a glitch in the matrix. Whatever, he was getting more and more upset that his car washing wants weren't being instantly gratified. And that was my fault of course. Regardless that I couldn't make the network connect any faster, he was going to send in a complaint and stormed off to his car in protest. Now it wasn't too busy so I looked out the window after him and noticed something strange. There was no car at pump number 9, and irate old man was heading to pump number 8, where his vehicle was waiting. Well then, I called up the screen to pump number 8, and there was his car wash code. Printing it out, I even had a trainee run out there and give it to him, but he was still determined to be cranky. Some people. If there's one thing I've learned about humanity, it's when people get embarrassed, they tend to have a complete mood shift, and in this case, I think when the old man realized he said the wrong pump number instead of just, oh, my bad, he decided to stay grumpy, which, you know, some people do, and you can't change that. Kudos to you for going above and beyond making sure he got his car wash code. Our next tale is by Venus Extravaganza 98 titled Old Woman Acts Very Rude, Surprisingly Apologizes When Confronted About Her Behavior. I work for a big name department store. I served an old woman with a large order. I asked her if that's all one transaction, which she responds very rudely. What kind of question is that? Do you see another person with me? At this point, I'm cringing because I know this isn't going to be an easy transaction. She tries to pass me her bags, but I'm not allowed to pack them, so I place all of her items on the end. She starts yelling and screaming about how lazy I am, calls me the worst cashier in the world, adds some rather personal insults. Eventually, I look at her and say, Look, I'm just following the rules of my job. I'm not allowed to deviate from them in any way. There's no reason to get personal. Please, leave me alone. She seemed pretty humiliated after that and simply responds with, Okay, and remains silent until the transaction is complete, when she apologizes for her behavior and admits she was in a bad mood and shouldn't have taken it out on me. I'm not sure if she was actually sorry or just embarrassed that I called her out, but I genuinely wish more rude customers would apologize like she did. This kind of goes hand in hand with what I said before about people getting embarrassed and then their mood just flipping. In this case, it flipped in a positive way. She realized she was already in a bad mood and was taking it out on other people. If people would just own up for their mistakes instead of making excuses, the world would be a much better place. And our final tale is from Cosmic Toaster 907 titled, Ma'am, That's Not How It Works. I'm a manager in a fairly large and well-known craft store in the US and Canada. I've been working there for four years now and I've had my fair share of headache inducing customers. A few days ago, I had one woman that takes the cake. On Tuesday, I was working on truck, putting new freight on the shelves, when a woman approached me. She comes in frequently and she's never the easiest to handle. Let's call her Karen. Karen approaches me. I have a question. Me putting my best customer service voice and smile. Yes ma'am, what can I assist you with? She proceeds to shove her phone into my face. The app says that I will get a voucher within 72 hours of earning it. It's been two days. I want my voucher. Ma'am, 72 hours is three days. It's only been 48. Well, I purchased $30 worth of stuff Saturday. Where is it? Yes, I know that it should be three days, but she originally said two. Ma'am, I apologize, but I can't do anything in store. You'll need to call the customer service line and they can help you. But it takes 72 hours for vouchers to update in the system, and up to 10 for them to come through your email or app. It doesn't say that. You've asked us about it before and we've explained it before. 
She mumbles something about me being a bitch and walks off. 20 minutes later, I'm in the kids section putting up glitter. She sees the glitter glue pens. How much are these? $4.99. She grabs two packs and thanks me. 10 minutes later, cashier comes on the radio. Can someone do a price check? Customer says that these glitter pens are $1, but they're ringing up for $4.99. I sigh and reply. I helped her. They are $4.99. She's aware of this. She's heading back there. Great. Karen points at the $1 tag for items below the pens. It says they're $1. Ma'am, they're $4.99. I told you that when you asked a few minutes ago. This says $1. I grab the hooks with the $1 labels clearly attached. These are $1. Those are $4.99. The $1 is sold out. I apologize. Then those should be $1. No. Those hooks clearly say they're $4.99. She then points on the shelf. What about these? It says $2, but nothing is there. Yes, ma'am. That item is sold out. She points at the $2 and moves up to the glitter glue two shelves up. Then these should be $2. No, those are $3. That doesn't make sense. It should go up to the next item up. No, it is only for that item, not ones above it. I've never heard that before. She storms off. Not even five minutes later. OP, can you come up front? She wants a manager. I walk up front, mentally preparing for the crap show that I'm about to walk into. She's glaring daggers at me. I have some complaints about how you run this store. First of all, the signs are not clear. Ma'am, we have the same system as almost everyone else. Prices are on the peg for that item, not above it. A regular customer like me doesn't know that. Internally screaming and thinking, everyone knows that, my kid even knows how it works. Secondly, the sales sign over there says 40% off, they're 50%. Yes, she complained about the item being on a better sale than stated. I'm sorry ma'am, corporate will sometimes have a higher sale for items and a couple days we won't receive signs or be notified until we see it at the register. This is ridiculous. I'm going to shop at your competitor. Sorry to hear that. Have a good day, ma'am. She came back in yesterday. I love how this Karen just embodies the typical Karen. Causes a stink, wants things her way. Just because the price isn't what she wants the price to be, she assumes that threatening that she's not going to shop there anymore is going to cause that business to shut down. Ironic that she came back in. Empty threats. Something Karens love. Alright, that's enough tales for the day. Well, that wraps up this episode of Tales from Retail. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload, and drop a comment down below. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, have a great day and stay safe out there.